Let's continue our countdown. At number six, it's the Minnesota Wild. Their top prospects, don't worry, we'll go in depth, but front and center. There he is, the Brock Faber experience. Collectively, it's said that this group could rival Buffalo in terms of prospect depth. 15 or 16 NHLers in the wild pool as we welcome in Brock Faber, who joins us right now. What you were cooking in April was mental toughness. You had that heartbreak at the Frozen Four. You turn around and just hours later, a couple of days later, you make your NHL debut and lead the Wild in ice time. What was going through your mind at that point? Yeah, I mean, there was obviously a, a lot going on. Um, you know, obviously a very, very unfortunate finish there and, you know, something that you still think about today. But, um, yeah, being able to step right in and, um, you know, play for the hometown team uh, was so special and such a such an amazing moment for for you know me and my family and um, you know it was uh, again a lot of emotion but I'm thankful for it and you know ready to get back to work. So you took that experience and then into the playoffs you go because you hadn't been going through enough already at that time. But you step into the playoffs, NHL playoffs, and man, I was so impressed. You didn't look out of place at all. I thought you played really well. Uh, what was the experience like for you just in terms of going from the NCAA competition, couple regular season games, but then everybody talks about the ramp up NHL playoffs. What was the pace of the game like and that experience like for you? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, the building was definitely a lot louder. That's for sure. But, <laughs> um, you know, uh, it, it was the pace of play is just on such another such a different level. And um you know, I'm, I'm so grateful that the coaches, you know, put trust in me to go play my game. And um, obviously another another unfortunate ending, you know, um, and we're looking to kind of change that this year. So, um, but yeah, it was uh, great atmospheres, um, you know, playing at home especially was, was so amazing. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, you know, a, a day I'll remember for forever that, that those two weeks there for sure. You know, it's crazy to me when you go back and think about, OK, drafted by the L.A. Kings, they've got a deep crop of defensemen, especially on the right side. Three years at Minnesota. Next thing you know, the phone rings, you're getting traded. What was it like to be traded as a prospect who hadn't yet played in an NHL game going from L.A. Uh, to Minnesota? Yeah, I mean, it was something I didn't didn't expect. That's for sure. Um, you know, and I was I was excited to be with the Kings and. Um, you know, I got I had so many great relationships there and was excited to take that step after this past year and, um, you know, kind of came out of nowhere. And uh, obviously I got the call from Billy and, um, you know, from then on, it was kind of a blur. Just uh, you call my dad, my parents right away and they didn't really even believe it. Um, neither did I. It was it, it was. You know, something I'm, I'm forever grateful for the Kings, you know, uh, how much work they put into me. And um, but, yeah, it was it was definitely a dream come true again to just um, be from here and grow up here and always watch the wild. So many wild jerseys. It was uh, special, special for me and my family. So. So we were watching the wild during the playoffs and every year in the playoffs, there's a certain number of plays that just stand out in your mind. Do You remember being a part of a memorable play because you were. And everybody still <laughs> talks about it. You know where yeah. I'm going. What uh, stands out in your mind from that moment? Yeah, I mean, it was, I'm assuming you're talking about the the lucky stick I had there. I don't know uh, how much skill it was luck stick. or skill. <laughs> luck right involved. There. Come on. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it was, you know, as you can see, it, um, it was my guy. So I, I'm glad I was able to get a stick on that or uh, game one would have went a lot differently. So, um, yeah, it was kind of just instinctual, uh, just dove out there. And again, I got, whether you whether you believe it or not, got pretty lucky, so. Uh, Maybe may a bit of a hope play, but I think there was some skill involved in that one too. So we'll give, we'll give it skill. to you. Um, the, <laughs> okay, thank you. One of the things about your game that I, I think is terrific, we know you're a great skater, you're a great defender, um, poise with the puck, decision-making, kind of those smaller details of your game, I, I find are, are so good. Uh, are those things that you practice a lot, you know, whether it's killing an entry at the blue line or, or, or pushing a guy into the wall, um, some of those kind of smaller plays, so you don't have to go and make those highlight reel type plays to, to keep a puck out of the net? 
Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is definitely something I, ever since I moved back to D, um, you know, playing for the NTDP, the national team, uh, there in Plymouth, Michigan, that helped me a lot with the defensive side of my game. Um, which, you know, I do definitely pride myself on those, uh, on those parts of my games, my skating and, you know, my gaps and being able to shut down plays and playing against other teams, top players. But, um, you know, going into the season, I obviously I feel confident in the, the way I can move the puck and skate with the puck and um, hoping to add just more and more confidence in the offensive side of my game. But, um, yeah, definitely I, I do pride myself on, on those things, and that's something that I kind of learned from the whole coaching staff and the whole development from uh, the national team, you know, development program. So, Getting into a few NHL games, how did that change the course for what you're doing to prepare for next year now moving forward in terms of maybe your training, uh, the mindset moving forward to, to make it next year to be a full-time NHL or right from the start of the season? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I, I, I've said it a few times before, this is definitely my, um, this is definitely the most important offseason I've ever had. Um, just get my body ready and, you know, physically and mentally preparing myself because, you know, an 82-game season is a whole lot different than a 42-game season in college. Um, and obviously, you're playing against the best guys in the world. So, um, you know, just taking it day by day and doing anything I can to, to be to be at my best um, come October and, um, you know, let the chips fall from there. So, I'm not a hockey coach, but I want to tell you, keep doing what you're doing. It's working, and we're loving <laughs> watching you do it. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank you guys. I appreciate it for having me. Our pleasure. Brock Faber, I turn to you right away and I say, could he be more likable? No. <laughs> could he be more modest? No. What's your breakdown of him? Yeah, great, a great guy. Obviously, doing the interview with him, you can see that he's a, he's a good person. But um, I, I'm really high on this guy for next season. I think he not only steps into the lineup, but he could play a significant role. Matt Dumba, not there, right? this might be the guy to replace him alongside Jonas Brodin. Mm. And I don't think that moment's going to be too big for him. I know we've only seen a small sample at the NHL level, but like I said, and we heard him talk about it, he makes so many of the smaller, important plays on the ice to be a good defender so often that I think he's going to be effective in a top four role against tougher competition. Um, so I I'm really high on him to not only be a player for them next season, to but to be a guy who plays a significant role. Um, he thinks the game really well. He's a great skater. He defends well. And if he's playing with Jonas Brodeen, man, what a shutdown pairing that could be. Yeah, that could be fantastic. But I want to go from the back end to the front end and talk a little bit about a guy that I got to know well in his junior career, and that's Marco Rossi. When it comes to Rossi, he was one of the players deeply affected by the illness created by COVID-19 and really has had a difficult time coming back from that. When you look at his numbers in a whole with the Iowa Wild, 53 points in 63 games in his first year, just under a point per game this year, he gets into 19 NHL games over the course of the season with just one assist. Here's a guy who came out of the Ottawa 67s program, 120 point CHL player of the year, and you're thinking, all right, this guy's gonna make that jump instantly. He's a versatile guy who can play center, he can play the wing, good on faceoffs, good low center of gravity, and a really skilled guy. But I think now is the time where it's for Marco Rossi to make that next step to move forward now and become a productive guy in that top nine. I still think he can play as a top six guy, but I think getting him into minutes of the top nine, maybe that middle six type of role before he transitions moving forward. But I still have high hopes for this player. Let's hope all that health stuff is behind him and he can get back to playing the great hockey that we know.